<laughs> but you might all be the same basis. So if it is your wife and she has the, your children, your children can do the cleaning. If anyone got sort of teeny, <laughs> uh, no, no, they have that's 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 <laughs> Technically, your children could be made. I mean, I, I always had children at home um, when I was running my business, and I always just used to make them work at the school holidays, and I used to pay them because like, they did actually do the work. They were, you know, difficult to keep still to do the work, but you sort of say, well, you can do with some spreadsheets and I can do some pocket money. So yes, you can pay, mm -hmm. your, and your children have got personal allowance and probably not using it. You wouldn't say they are doing it, but if, if does anybody have children that do help look after the students? Or, yeah. 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 So you can pay them, you can sort of say, babysit the student for me while I go and do some shopping, or can you entertain the student, or could you play Monopoly with them or something. You might choose to give them 10 pounds pocket money or something for doing it, okay. but you can pay for the services that they're giving you. So if, if, you, if that is a business expense, if you consider a business expense, then it's a business expense. Hold on, please, please. No, no, I mean, no, you have to pay them. You physically have to pay them. So they, they'd revenue like to see a trace of money. A lot of people pay their children in their business. And the revenue, the question they ask is, what do they do? Is that a reasonable amount of money you're paying them? So if you say they do filing and they pay them £45 an hour, they'll say no. But if you say they do filing and I pay them £3.50 an hour, they're only going, yeah, okay, fair enough. Now let's see the payment. So if they were going to query it, they would want to see that you physically... Not just claim, it's not an allowance you can claim at the year end, you physically have to pay the money to them. So as long as they can see a transfer to the bank account and it says not pocket money and it's not £30 a week forever, it would say um, uh, help with student or cleaning or uh, shopping or whatever, or helping cook. If you had another appointment in the evening and you needed them to cook dinner for the, I mean, maybe your, your children are older and help them help from some children, but uh, if they do that work, yes, you can pay them. Um, so, the, in the first column, the educational, it would be things like, I understand that the LLE give you books and things, but you might choose to go and buy some dictionaries or some additional books, so that it, it's a choice. If you think someone here might think, I'm not going to buy any other books, I'm just going to use the college resources, someone else might think, well, that would be really useful for me, because I'm teaching business English, or I'm teaching something that I don't think has been covered, I think I want to buy a book on this for my students. Yes, it's an allowable expense, if that's what the reason you bought it. Keep receipts, um, resources, so that might be happy DVDs. I, it's hard for me to say because I don't know each of your circumstances and each of the needs of your students will be different. Um, but if you think I'm doing this for this student because this student has a special need, it might be you only identify what their need is when you, when you meet them, then you may go and buy some resources or books or it may be games, it may be risk or something, <laughs> international games, and um, then you can claim for those things as well. Journals, if you buy magazines, or if you're buying a business magazine, if you're teaching business, business English, or if you're, um, what other English would you be teaching? Medical, if you've got a medical journal or something, because you may want to show your students how it is in this country. So anything like that you can claim. If you buy DVDs that are not for your benefit at all, um, then yes, you can claim for those as well. So if you felt that your student's going to have a lot of lonely evenings and you don't want to be with them all night, um, you might want to choose to hire videos for them or DVDs or have some extra ones on your um, Virgin subscription or something. So if you, if the reason do, you've done it isn't for your family, so you can't do Peppa Pig for your little children, but if the reason you're doing it is for the student, then it's an allowable expense. And the revenue won't say, no, you can't have James Bond videos for your student. If you think that's necessary, then yes, you can. Um, educational trips, I think you get paid for educational trips anyway. So, But you, then it means that the, you're getting the income, but you can then claim the expense. So if you have to um, entry to theatres or going out for meals or whatever, for the student, that would be an allowable expense. Um, if you take the family members on the trip, um, I mean, for example, we quite often take our students out to play golf. And I have young um, yes. chaps in my family, and we take them along, and sometimes they'll play. You can park on your lines, but if, <laughs> if the revenue look at it, they'll say, hang on a minute, there's only one student, why are you taking four people? Some of them are really, really small minded, and some of them, I can't be bothered. So some of them will look, will actually say, I want to see the receipt. Bearing in mind that when you do your self assessment form, they're not seeing the receipts. 
but they can ask for the receipts. So if they looked at you in any detail, they would say, we'd like all your receipts for last year, we're doing a full books and records inquiry into your affairs. And if they've got the mindset of a really mean person, they will go through every single thing and they'll be saying, oh, we have one, oh, it was amazing. And he was running a sort of a, a barbecue type business and he had, um, so most of the things he's buying meat. And he had a receipt and it has cauliflower cheese. And they said, you can't, and they, they actually went through all his receipts and were disallowing things like, you can't have that instant cauliflower cheese. It's obvious you don't use that in your business. And they were disallowing the most minuscule things. And we just said, just get a knife. And they went away and they were fine. But so, so sometimes they will pick on really tiny things. So yeah, you're not supposed to take your children. It isn't a reliable expense. Um, it's a reasonable theory that you have to... But it's more entertaining for the students. Yes. Yeah. Young people. yeah. So if you take your children, you could say, um, you could pay your children to help you. So, so you, you know, and they could pay for their own golf entry. So you could do it that way. That you can do it, and it depends on whether it's reasonable or not. So it's holding exclusively of the terms. So yes, so educational trips, um, the premises costs, additional costs for using your home. So that would be no council tax, unless you're a single occupier and suddenly you start declaring that you've got another student. But normally your council tax is the same if you've got two people, three people, four people. So having a student, you can't claim council tax. Electricity, yes you can. And the way of doing it, there isn't any set formula. The revenue just like you to have considered how you're going to claim. So, for example, you could claim on the theory that what they'd like to see is that last year you paid a thousand pounds for electricity and you had no students. This year you paid fourteen hundred pounds and the increase isn't because the electricity board's put up the prices much. Um, it's because you've had an extra student. So in that case you could claim pay four hundred pounds. So if you can sort of say there's my last year's bills, there's my this year's bills, that would be a good enough reason mm -hmm. for claiming. Other people may say I've had students for three weeks of the year, so I'm going to claim 350 seconds of a whole year's gas and electricity, divided by the number of people in the house, times by one student. Mm -hmm. You could do it that way. Um, some people just say, I can't be bothered, I'll just claim mm -hmm. 20 pounds a week and hope that's enough. So there isn't a set way, as long as you've, mm -hmm. you've considered how you're doing it, and as long as it makes sense, it, it can be on an hourly basis. You can say, well, I've had a student here all day every day and I used to teach full time so there was no one in the house so for those three weeks I've done 30 hours tuition and therefore there, no one would have been in the house so I'm going to claim 30 hours additional costs mm. of the electricity and gas whatever suits you best and as long as you can justify they won't normally argue as long as you've got some if you give them some reason I did it on floor area yeah, you could do it on floor area you could say yeah, mm. absolutely so, so you can do anything, anything oh. that you think Works. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did mine on. Um, you get a tape measure. <laughs> I did mine on meters measure rather than money. Me measure all the way around the yeah, house. Yeah, how many units we can use? That would be totally acceptable. Heating the house yeah. cost this. That's acceptable. That's acceptable. So everybody's going to have a different way of doing it. But you couldn't claim fifty percent of all your total electricity bills, for example, because that wouldn't be reasonable. So as long as it's something, your your theory sounds great. Your theory sounds great. It's you know. There are lots of different ways of coming to the same answer. As long as you write down how you've done it, and in case they ever do ask, chances are we've got 1,500 clients. They're supposed to look at 150 people in detail every year, and the bars they look at one or two. And normally, you have no idea why they picked on an old age pensioner with 10,000 pounds worth of income. It wasn't really <laughs> <laughs> um, Does the same go for food? After your lunch thing, yes. you grab the meals. And mm, uh, no, um, technically entertaining isn't an allowable expense for me, for you, for anybody. But what you can do is it's the additional cost of the food. So if you were buying pork chops every day and you were buying three pork chops, because you have three in the family and a student comes and you're buying four pork chops, then obviously one pork chop and some vegetables would be an allowable proportion of your food bill. So what you can do again, you could say 52 weeks in the year. You could keep your, if, if most people pay for their food on credit card, is that the true assumption? There's no, no, no? Cash. Cash. Okay, so if you've got receipts, I mean, it's quite easy on the credit, you could consider getting a business credit card because it's actually much easier to analyse at the year end. If you've got a credit card and it says, 
Asda, Tesco or whatever. So you can say to the Inland Revenue, if there was an ever an argument, you don't need the receipts then because it's analysed for you on your credit card. Look, in a year I spend £100 a week on food and you can see I have students six weeks of the year and in those six weeks of the year I spend £200 a week on food. So I'm, on that basis I'm going to claim an extra 100 and they're not going to say no, mm -hmm. they just might say, well that's a lot, you say, well you've got to go to more effort, that they obviously, um, Kate's not going to expect you to give them beans on taste every night, because they'll complain. So you're going to have to give them proper meals, and you, you may have to make more effort than if you were on your own. So you could claim, and there's nothing to say you can't give them steak, or you can't give them venison, or you have to give them minced beef. There's nothing to say. You, it's, like, it's your choice. It's what you think is your business. And if you're used to eating steak, you're not going to give your student hurricane beans or something, are you? You're going to make an effort. So anything that is additional costs, and any way you want to justify it, you can. When I first started this, because I had quite a lot of students, and then they've been family members, and sometimes they wrote you and sometimes they yes. yes. There's no way I can write down anything I spend on food. I, I, I need a life. You know? yeah. So my accountant said, well, maybe do it for a month. Yes, yeah. Um, and work out. So what we agreed was that basically, um, you know, it's... I spend on average, when I have an extra person in the house, X amount. Yes. So some of them eat a lot, some of them don't. Yes. Yeah. It swings around about. But you've also got to take into account extra cleaning, products, yeah, extra toilet roll, yeah. all that sort of stuff. Um, so we come up with a figure per person. Yes. And then I work it out on Mondays. Yeah. On Mondays. Yeah. Absolutely fine. You can, and, and any, as long as you've got But if they ask me for all my receipts no, for food, no. I couldn't do that. No. To be perfectly honest, it's very rare that, that, that any of you would be asked to give all your receipts to, the, to each other. Mm -hmm. if, if you put in a ridiculous tax. You said spending £100 a week on per person. Yes. Yeah. So if, if it seems reasonable, if they kind of think, well, how much, you know, do, I mean, you know, anybody want to say how much they would spend per student on food extra for a week? Anybody got any ideas? Yeah, it's it's scale as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you've got more people in the house, it's going to cost you less. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. You can, you can decide how it suits you best. And, and you've got a, a decision that you've made based on, what, based on what you think. Mm -hmm. And that's absolutely fine. You can justify that to them. If they don't like it, if you ever had to go to see them, all that they would say is, we disagree. You're not having cauliflower cheese, you know, so they will start ringing around other things and telling you that's too high or looking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but last, last year they actually go for different categories of, of people. So one year they go for all the fish and chip shops in the cupboard wall. They'll go for a, a lot of fish and chip shops and they'll look at all their margins and they'll look at they compare their results. And every now and again they pick on a, an industry. You think, what are they doing? Last year they picked on private tutors, but not in their homes. They picked on private tutors who put cars in shop windows, you know, French lessons, you know, sort of 20 banks, and obviously they're not going to be declaring them. And they actually went for, and they held their little intelligence more writing down telephone numbers and shop windows, put them oh, on a database, and, and actually going for them. Yeah. You think, but they, they nice. announced which sector they're going for in a year. So last year was due, so you'll be alright for a few years. <laughs> <laughs> You can get through the next six years of the game. <laughs> when do they announce? They, they usually tell, but it usually comes in our tax journals. It sort of says, oh, they've said this year they're doing car sales. Well, normally they would do a high value business mm. where they're a bit dodgy anyway, car dealers, cash businesses, fish and chip shops. Tutors. I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. it's because a lot of people who are tutors, um, maths tutors and language tutors, are also teachers full time. Yes. And the revenue know full well that probably 90% of them are declaring, but it's such a small amount of money, you'd think they could get a life on going yeah. somewhere else, but there we go. So, sorry? <laughs> um, yeah, so basically those are the additional sort of expenses that you could have. If you have metered with water, that's a really good example, you know what your meterage is on a normal bill, suddenly a student's having 42 showers a day, and your, your meter reading is higher and you pay more money. So you could say, well, that student cost me a lot more than normal students. And you can of course. Same with insurance. Um, capital expenditure, I've highlighted it in yellow because it's treated separately. So if you do buy a computer, these are not normal running expenses. These are called capital expenses, and you gain capital allowances and your investment allowances on capital. And that, that you might need some advice. But on the, when you're doing your self-assessment, there's a separate thing about capital allowances. So don't claim it in your normal running expense. Don't claim it under repairs. You have to go along the tabs at the top and it says, 
capital lights as a new claim for new computers or shelving units or desks, or more expensive equipment in that category. If you were buying um, floppy disks or um, uh, memory pens, that kind of thing, 